Well, here we are, Mary Audrey. Happy Mother's Day. It is. It comes, it comes around year after year. I know, year after year. <laughs> I was kind of waiting for my breakfast in bed, but um, it just doesn't work out when your kids are grown and married. So, <laughs> But that's okay. Um, did you get breakfast in bed or no? Are you kidding? Because when I get breakfast in bed, they plop it on my chest and leave the room, and I'm still laying there. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just happy. Um, just I'm just so excited for today just to celebrate mums all over the world and we just want to wish you a very happy mo happy mother day mother's day <laughs> and um we're just so excited just to be here this morning and it's just such a privilege to be with one of my friends mary audrey you know i'm i i'm just thinking what a dream i remember when i met mary audrey oh 28 years ago in a meeting and I, I said, I always tell the story, so I'm just going to tell it, Mary Audrey. Tell, tell but, us again. But I remember, um, I was in my early 30s, and I remember saying, when, she, when you got up there and you just began to pray, and you began to speak, and you were just so normal, but <laughs> so, you had a uh, love for the Lord and a depth for the, the, um, the Word of God. And I remember just saying, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> So, You're far past it, darling. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> You're far past. <laughs> but I'm just so excited just to um, have Mary Audrey here the, today. And I'm going to start out with just something very short, and then I'm just going to give the, the rest of the time to Mary Audrey this morning. But one of the questions, um, actually, I asked some my friends on Facebook, and I said this, I said, what, what does every mom, um, what would they would have loved to know before they had their first child? And I wonder sometimes whether we would have had the courage to have children if we knew all the details, if we knew all that, you know, was going to happen. But, um, <laughs> and I did get a few responses, so I'm just going to read them to you. And I would just um, even suggest that as you're sitting in your home today, if there was something that you needed to know or you wanted to know that um, if you have a child, you know, when it's their time, when they're grown and before they have their first, that you would be able to share some of those things. But um, uh, this one, I, um, from one of my friends on Facebook, um, she said, they grow up fast, so enjoy every moment. Let me tell you, I remember when my kids were younger, I was like, oh man, you know, they're so beautiful. But you know what, truly moms, sometimes there are days when you're just like, oh, you're overwhelmed, but you know, you will miss those days, the, the chatter and the running around, those kinds of things. So I agree. You know, the other one was um, take time to snuggle and read books. Yeah, I love that. Those moments now, like the fun part about being a grandparent for me yeah. is that um, I get to read books to my grandchildren. I get to snuggle um, with my, my grandchildren beside me. And I just enjoy those moments because I know that, that they, they grow up really quick. Now, this is one, Mary Audrey. I don't know if What's you that? remember, but it said, don't be worried about a messy house. What do you think about that one? Is there anything else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, what do you think? You know, like, do you think when your kids were little and there was, you know, like, they just sort of ran through the house? They and... did, but, you know, I'm, I'm old school, honey, and I was a playpen mother. Oh, so there you go. I think it's a little bit different now. We don't want to restrain the darlings. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I never even thought about that. I think we did try play pens, but no, nope, I had the messy house and um, yeah, um, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. But I did like, I did like a clean house. So for probably about 10 minutes of the day, it was clean. Beautiful. There you go. Yep. And another one was enjoy the small moments in life with your kids, the laughter, the cuteness, first smiles, words, and even kindergarten. And let me tell you, um, I remember um, with my first son when I dropped him off for first day of school in kindergarten, I remember wearing sunglasses so the moms wouldn't see me cry. <laughs> so that was just, you know, I just, I just knew that, you know, that was a moment, you know, that he was moving forward. Same thing happened with my second son. But the, with my second son, I remember thinking, you know what, there's no other children to enjoy that moment with. This is it. You know, my kids are truly grown up. So those were some of them. But um, one of the things that um, I would love to say to you uh, moms, and especially um, you will understand this, but those that are expecting even today 
and it's your first child. And I'm just going to read this, but enjoy. For, don't forget to enjoy the depth of love that you will experience when you um, lay your eyes on your child. Whether you um, adopt a child or you have a child that's, um, that you are, is, is a baby, and when you look at them, the possibilities of all that God has for them, the love that you have for them is absolutely amazing. And, and I just remember, even um, with both of my sons, but I, I remember with my first son, just looking at him and spending hours, literally hours, just speaking into his spirit and just blessing him and just speaking all the possibilities of what God would want to do um, in his life. And it was just the love that I felt for him. I mean, if you had told me um, before I had him that I was going to experience this love. I mean, I really thought that I knew what love was. I loved my parents. I really, really, really loved my husband. I thought, man, that's love. But when you, when I looked into my, my, both of my son's um, eyes, when I first saw them, man, I really, really loved them. And you know that Jesus, Jesus, he loves us too. And I just want to read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. And I'm going to read this in the Passion. Now, this is just a, a biblical way of what love is. And I want to encourage you this morning, as we as parents, um, as grandparents, have the opportunity to model what love is, first go to the scriptures and read this to yourself. Read it to your children. And just say, hey, God, you know, Teach me how to love just the way you loved and tell me what love is all about. And, and Mary, Audrey, and I, we were chatting a bit about the scripture on the phone, and we were like, man, um, I don't know whether we would get it right all the time. No. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. So in the Passion, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7 says, Love is large and incredibly patient. Wow. When I, when I realize, you know, just... Um, when I asked Jesus into my heart, his love was large for me. He opened his arms wide for me, and I am just so grateful for that. But I also know that in my walk with him, that I have been, or he has been very, very patient with me. And so that is something that we would want to demonstrate to our kids. Love is gentle and consist consistently kind to all. Man, now, are you kind to all, Mary Audrey? All the time. All the time? By faith. By faith, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I think of that, you know, when you, when you try to teach your kids, um, you know, you've got to be kind to them. But meanwhile, you know, the neighbor's kid is being really grumpy back to your kids now. This is personal experience, watching, watching my, my little grandkids, you know, playing with other kids. Um, it refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. That's good. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. That's a big one, man. You know how often... Um, I would say, as I've grown in the Lord, he's really taken that, that, that sting out of me when, you know, sometimes when, how many times do you want to be um, right and how many times do you want to be wrong? Nobody wants that, but, you know, it's just a hard one. Love is a safe place of shelter. And, you know, under the arms of Jesus, that's the safest place that you can be. But this morning, as it's Mother's Day, when you think when a mother or a father holds their child, they are safe and they are protected. It's just beautiful. It says, for it never stops believing the best for others. And, you know, that's the thing. You know, when you have the love of the Father inside of you, when you know and have experienced that kind of love, then, then you, you can believe the best for others. And so that is incredible. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. And you know what? I just want to say this morning that even 
in what is going on right now, God has not given up on us. He is still here. The presence of God is in your homes. The presence of God is in your situations with your, with your kids, with your family. And it's just absolutely amazing that he has not given up on us. He hasn't said, oh, look at those people on the earth. Oh, my goodness, you know what? Like, I'm just going to move them aside. No, he is there with you this morning. And I just want to just encourage you this morning that if you have never experienced that perfect love that, that comes from heaven, that is God the Father sending his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you and for me. And if we admit that we have sinned and that we have done wrong, um, and then we believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. And isn't that amazing? That's the one of the greatest examples and of, of love that Jesus died on the cross. He took all of my sin. He took all of that. And he just... And it went on the um, it went on the cross, and you know somebody described it. I, I heard this recently that even when Jesus was whipped, you know, I remember Mary Audrey just seeing them. They said like every whip mark, there was Sandra's sin. Oh yeah. And oh my goodness, it was just like I'm like oh my goodness, and so I just want to pray this prayer with you because if you have not, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. How about you pray this prayer? Jesus, today I come before you, and I admit that I have sinned. But I thank you that you died on the cross for me, that you died on the cross for my sin, and that I can come before you, and I can repent and ask you, please forgive me for all those things that I have done wrong. And because I've done that, Lord, that you will receive that. And Jesus, I'm asking today that you will come into my heart and that you will live with me forever. And Jesus, I thank you that even today, that as I've said this prayer, that, that I will have eternal life with you. And that is the greatest demonstration of love that has ever been expressed in this world. And so, Lord, I am so grateful, so thankful. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to encourage you. There's going to be um, a little um, thing that Get Prayer Now. Catch, it's actually catchfire.com, Get Prayer Now, and there's a slash in there. They're going to put that up on the screen. If you want to talk to somebody on the prayer line right now, they will just go to that right away, and there will be somebody waiting for you right now. And so I just want to bless all of you that are watching today. Again, happy Mother's Day to everyone. And you know what? Just take a deep breath and just say today's going to be a good day. And so I want to invite um, Mary Audrey. She's right here beside me. And I'm so excited for what you're going to share this morning, and I just want to bless you. Thank you. I bless you. And, and I'm so thankful, Sandra, that you started us off by talking about love. Because um, uh, I realize what I have to share. People need to know that um, it's all uh, under the umbrella of love. And uh, if I could rewrite these notes that I have in my hand, I would, I would insert the word love, 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 love in about every paragraph because it's his love that carries us through no matter what. So thank you for reminding me about that. And um, it's interesting. Those of you who, who know me know that um, for me, the, the, the teacher anointing kind of um, slips in quite, quite quickly. And so that's why you're going to see me um, using these notes for the first part of what I want to share, because I've just got some principles that I, I, I want to make sure that I, I don't take any rapid trails and I stay on target. So if you see me reading the notes instead of looking straight at you, um, I just want to make sure that um, I don't um, say anything in, in error to what I have, have down here. So I, I know today's a day for honoring mothers, and it's wonderful. It's it's the day when we have, um, actually, it, it was great. Sandra spoke to you moms, all ages of moms. Um, I want to speak to the kids. And most especially today, um, I felt the need to speak to um, adult children of older moms. 
we've got a good example of generations here on, on the stage right now. And um, we think of Mother's Day as a, a day of, of giving gifts and saying thank you, but and honoring our mothers. But we as Christians need to see this um, honoring as a lifestyle rather than just a special day. And yeah, yeah, please, 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 we love the chocolates. And, uh, or I, mean, I like the goodies, the licorice goodies. We love those. And we love the flowers and we love the beautiful cards. Don't ever, ever stop that. But are there some other things that mothers really, really, really long for. I like to say things that they always wanted but were afraid to ask. And we need to be aware of what honoring is because it's a word that is tossed around quite a bit these days. And we need to understand there's a huge uh, difference between our society's concept of honor and biblical honor. And according to our English language and our culture, Honor and respect are very similar, and they're conditional. And honor and respect, in our normal term, terminology and way of thinking, are reserved for those that we've decided are worthy of receiving honor according to their abilities and, and qualities and achievements. In other words, you're expected to measure up to certain expectations to receive honor and respect. But that's not the way it is of biblical honor. It's quite different. It's rather like that principle of forgiveness. You know, it's not an option, but a God requirement that brings benefit both ways. So, in, and I know that you're familiar with this scripture from Exodus 20, verse 12, one of the Ten Commandments, where it says, honor your mother and father. We've got to include father in here, too. Honor your mother and father. Amplified says, regard, treat with honor, do obedience, and courtesy your mother and father. Oh, why? <laughs> Here's the first promise with the commandments, that it may go well with you in the land the Lord gives you. And the word, Hebrew word, K-A-B-A-D, kabad, is the same one that we use for honoring God. It means weighty, high praise and status, giving that to another in word and deed. And Jesus, in Luke 18, 20, used the very same word. And as that's translated into Greek, it means to properly assign value. Biblical honor is not conditional. Let's just kind of define it a bit. Godly honor is placing value and worth on someone because of who they are, not, not because of what they do or they don't do. <laughs> the Lord loves waking me up in the middle of the night with one or two words that kind of are an impetus for me to think more deeply when I'm awake during the day. And I, got, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, this word blasting in my mind, it's position, not performance. It's position, not performance. Honoring a parent means to treat them with regard or, or regard them with special attention and respect. And although as adults, we might not be directly under their authority as we've come into our own adulthood, we cannot out, ever, ever, ever outgrow God's command to honor them. And we honor them both with um, actions and attitudes. It's more than lip service. I think it's in, in Mark chapter 7 it, I, where, where Jesus says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Honor begets honor. God will not honor those who do not obey his command to honor their parents. So if we desire to please God then we will choose to honor who he desires us to. <laughs> and honoring is not always easy. It's not always fun. It's certainly not possible in our own strength. We need the help of the Holy Spirit many, many times during our walk. That's why I was chuckling with Sandra when she told me she was going to um, share 1 Corinthians 13. And I said, you think you can do that in your own strength? You've got another thing coming. You think you can honor in your own strength? You've got another thing coming. I, I used to sometimes chuckle when I would, would do weddings and perhaps the, the couple weren't at yet um, walking in a relationship with Jesus. And it was so strange. The verse of, verses of scripture that they always wanted at their wedding was 1 Corinthians 13. And I, I thought, you've got to be kidding. That was our lovely sentiments. But you're never going to be able to do that unless the Spirit of God is igniting you from within and loving you and you loving out of that. We need the, his, the Holy Spirit's help so many times. So honoring is saying that somebody, and in this case your mom, 
is special to you, and honor is huge, believe me. So here I am today um, representing the older mothers today. Notice I didn't say old. I said older mothers today <laughs> because some things are deeply important to us. And the, the couple of things I'm, I'm going to share with you are coming from my own experience, even right now in my life, but also, for, also the heart's desire that I've heard from other older moms as I've communicated with them over the last, over the last quite a while now. And since you are Christians, then you have the resources of the Holy Spirit within you to gift your mom with honor. I want to give you some examples or clues of some of the things she might really want. <laughs> like I'd laugh, my kids are always like, hey, mom, what do you want for Christmas? Hey, hey, mom, what do you want for your birthday? Hey, mom, what do you want for Mother's Day? So, um, What's the answer that you usually give? At my stage in life, I say, not much. So but as I gave this some really serious thought, lifestyle, lasting gifts from the heart came to mind. I'm only going to briefly mention three this morning. Oh, my goodness, when I started putting this together this week, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was almost getting into a seminar when I listed it, it was almost, I felt like I was almost going to be legalistic. Um, I would never want to be that, but more and more and more came to my attention that um, we need to consider what, what it means to truly honor a parent and honor your mom. And uh, I realized Friday night I had to rip up everything I had and start again yesterday morning because it, it just is it, monumental. But the three gifts I am believing that you are going to take hold of and be able to live out in your life with your mom are the gifts of understanding and listening and forgiving. These are not obligations. They're aspects of honoring, and they will hugely, greatly affect your relationship with your mom. So, uh, so, so ask the Holy Spirit to impact your heart and, and to en enable you in each of these so the first one I mentioned is that you will ask the Holy Spirit. Pray, pray that the Lord will give you an, un, give you an understanding heart. <laughs> You're going to be the receiver of this. Then, then you can impart it to, to your mom. First of all, let me ask, do you really, really, really know this woman who's your mother? Even though you've been around her and been influenced her for years, what makes her tick? Do you really know? And uh, I won't call it a devastating experience, Sandra, but um, in the last couple of months, my own mom has come back to my mind. Maybe it's because I'm getting older now, and we think, when you do get older, you think a lot of things differently. You look at a lot of things differently than you do when you're, when you're young. And my mom's been gone for about 40 years now at least, I had this huge remembrance, and all of a sudden, I, I, went, I, 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 I went into conviction. And then I, I went into re regret. This is what I want to avoid for you, or for you to avoid. I had conviction and, and regret and, and repentance. Because you see, as I think back to her now, and my growing up years and young married years with her as my mom, I never had a clue about her. Really. I never, she was just mom. I never had a clue about her hopes and her dreams and her feelings, you know, why she felt like that. Uh, I didn't have a clue about, about her desires or, or, or why she did certain things in certain ways that I thought were really dumb, you know. I, I have no honest to goodness. Maybe I was so self-absorbed, and uh, I don't know. But, but I, I really didn't know other than... Maybe the arguments we would have. I wasn't a very nice teenager, I guess. But I didn't know what made her happy, what made her sad, what made her angry. She was deeply, deeply private and reserved. And I realize now, in looking back, how, uh, how lonely she was. Now, that was pretty devastating a couple of months ago when it was hit me like a 10-ton truck. And I, it was like I was back and, and, and I was re actually reliving some situations that we w walked through together, my mother and I, and I realized now that I really didn't know her. 
So I say to you today, get understanding. Be interested in her. Communicate with her. Talk to her. Ask her about her day. When was the last time you asked her about her day? How is she doing? Have you ever asked her questions about her growing up? Have you ever really talked about the milestones in her life? And because we are such a multicultural family at Catch the Fire, I know that, that we've all come from so many different backgrounds, and we need to understand the culture that, that she grew up in and perhaps the culture that still holds her today, but is quite different from what you were experiencing. And another thing I was thinking about earlier this morning was, oh my goodness, we've got to understand the old culture. We have an understanding about the current Canadian culture that some of us, or some of you, have morphed into. And then we've got to understand about kingdom culture and the difference between the three. Oh, my word. Let her share about her hopes and fears with you. <laughs> Maybe you need to look and see what you have in common. No way she has certain likes and dislikes. I could go on and on and on here, but I'm praying, first of all, that you will have an understanding about the woman who happens to be your mother. And Sandra, could we just, could you, could you pick up, could you just pray, could we pray together about, uh, before I move on to the next, and uh, uh, pray about this understanding heart being released to those that are watching? Well, Father, I'm just asking right now, just even as Mary Audrey said that, first of all, I just want to say, you know, I love walking with my mom. And one of the things that happens when I walk with my mom is she shares her heart. Does she? Wonderful. She, she shares her heart. She talks about you know, what has happened in her life and her experiences. You're blessed. And you know what? The amazing part is I get to hear it and I want to listen. And so, Father, I'm asking that that even right now for those ones that are sitting there, and this isn't, this is revelation. This isn't to make anybody feel guilty or shameful and uh -uh. uh -uh. what oh, no. you haven't done. This is just revelation from heaven today to say, Father, would you give us an understanding heart for our mums. Yeah, because you know how easy it is to get impatient. But I, I, I always get so impatient with my mother. I thought she was old-fashioned and, and just fuddy-duddy. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't understand her. And I'm kind of sorry about that now. But we go on. The next one is that you would pray for a listening heart. And I'm thinking about the difference between listening and hearing. I can hear all the time. I can hear the, her word. I can hear her. But do I really listen? Do you really listen to her? And do you choose to put yourself in a position to listen? It's more than the sound. <laughs> to listen when she speaks, to hear her, yeah to listen to her opinions and thoughts. And I mean, really listen, pay attention, you know. When she tries to explain something, don't interrupt and walk away. <laughs> I know this happens at times, but you know, um, she's to be valued, not simply tolerated. <laughs> listen when she wants to talk about what's important to her and don't fluff it off. Yeah. I know when my own kids, even these days, have tuned me out. Maybe they have every reason to, not really. But I, I know what it feels like to all, you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden you know they're not there. They're not listening. They're not interested. And you, you know what that, that fosters some frustration that grinds inside. It does, you know. And um, I, I was kind of chuckling here. I, I think sometimes we as adult, as adult children... We need to learn um, how to put boundaries in place. And uh, that's another whole course, isn't it? You know, but, but it, if she does talk too much all the time, then you need to develop some skills in putting boundaries in place. So, Father, I pray for <laughs> every adult child in here. At what point do they become adult, Lord? <laughs> Who knows? But it would, would, would develop, would have a desire 
to move past themselves and their own interests and have a listening heart when mom is sharing how she feels about things or, or, or what she wants to do or what her opinions are. Father, that, that we would listen and hear sometimes what's behind the conversation. In Jesus' name, I ask for that to be released. And finally, we need to pray to have a forgiving heart. A forgiving heart. Your mom has probably made some colossal mistakes. Quite probably. She's probably made poor decisions. She's likely said and done things that have hurt you, or she's not been there when you needed her, or she wasn't there to stick up for you when it was really needed. And this day, as we pray for the Lord to release a forgiving heart within us, that we would choose to release any of those feelings of bitterness or, and resentment and forgive her. Remember, <laughs> my goodness, if you've been around Catch the Fire for any other time, you know that the, the gift of forgiveness is one of our foundational mandates in this place. And remember, in God's plan, that forgiveness is not a matter of feelings. It's a spiritual principle and a, and a command of God that deeply affects us. It's no light thing. And honeys, let me tell you, until you choose to do this, you and she are really unable to move forward, you know. You'll be stuck, as it were, in a, in a mire of anger and resentment, which is unhealthy for both of you. And forgiveness is not negating or denying issues. It clears the way for healing and restoration. And, and cleansing from the past and keeping short accounts today is an essential part of our walk in the kingdom. So, Sandra, before I finish here, would you pray for that heart of forgiveness to be released? Father, I'm asking um, that you would just come right now. And, and Lord, where we have held things against our mothers or our fathers, Lord, that, Lord, would you just put forgiveness in our hearts, Father, so that we don't cling on to those things anymore. And, Father, that we can walk and just as um, we talked about the 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, Lord, that we would be able to have a relationship with that kind of love in the name of Jesus. Mm. So there you go. Three awesome Mother's Day gifts, but not just for today, for tomorrow and the day after, the day after, the day after, for as long as you have left together. <laughs> They're part of a much larger package called honoring and remember what I said at the beginning, honor, godly honor is placing value and worth on someone because of who they are, not because of what they do or don't do. And the person who is your mother is a child of God. When I started thinking about this a couple of weeks ago and what I might do with this special day called Mother's Day, a, a particular interesting article showed up on my computer. We all get those, don't we, all the time. But this one I felt I wanted to close with today. And some of it, I'm trusting most of it will apply to you. Um, but, I, but, but I just loved it. It, it was rather thought-provoking. It's called, When Parents Get Older. Let them grow old with the same love that they let you grow. Let them speak and tell repeated stories with the same patience and interest that they heard yours as a child. Let them overcome. Let them win, like so many times when they let you win. Let them enjoy their friends, just as they let you. Let them enjoy talks with their grandchildren, because they see you in them. Let them enjoy living amongst the objects that have accompanied them for a long time, because they suffer when they feel you tear place, pieces of their life away. Let them be wrong, like so many times you've been wrong, and they didn't embarrass you by correcting you. Let them live and try to make them happy. The last stretch of the path they have left to go, give them your hand, just like they gave you their hand when you started your path. Honor your mother and father, 
that it may go well with you in the land the Lord is giving you. In Jesus' name, I bless you today as a grandma and a mother in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Mary Audrey, that was, I've got some tears here. I just want to bless you this morning um, when you've finished listening to this message that you just get a hold of your mom or a spiritual mom because sometimes um, I know many, many people that have way more kids than I do and just honor them today. Give them a phone call, send them a card, just a quick thanks, thank you for, you know, and whatever it is. But I just want to bless you today. And so, Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence today. I thank you for the power of the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Father, you are absolutely amazing. And so, in everything, Lord, we give thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. We just want to bless you guys. Have an incredible week.